Well, so good afternoon, members, officers, um, members of the public, particular, um, everyone from um, Compton Village College. Um, welcome to this meeting of the Climate and Environment Advisory Committee. Um, my name is Councillor Jeff Harvey, and usually talking with my colleague Martin Carl, one of the two vice chairs uh, of the committee, and um, former chair, um, Pippa Hayes, has stepped down as councillor. Uh, so I will be chairing the committee today and I'll stand moving forward. Um, so now, um, the opportunity for perhaps if we could all introduce ourselves, uh, going around the table, starting with uh, Eleanor Hayes. So, uh, thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ellie Haynes. I'm a development officer in the climate and environment team at South Cambridge District Council. Good afternoon, uh, Councillor Tony Hawkins. I'm the councillor for uh, the district councillor for Cody Court Ward and also the lead cabinet member for planning. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Councillor Peter Sandford. I'm one of the district councillors for Caxton and Blackwood Ward, also vice chair of the council. Now, uh, I'm Councillor Martin Cowan, uh, Vice Chair of, of the Committee uh, and also Councillor for Liston and Infant. Just to add that I'm also Councillor for Portion of Organisation to chair this meeting. Thanks. Good afternoon, everyone. Lawrence Murray, and I'm Democratic Services Officer for the Climate and Environment Advisory Committee. My name is Shubhara Bhattacharya, District Councillor of Cambon, and I'm also part of this committee. Good afternoon, I'm Bunty Waters. I'm the District Councillor for the Environmental Work and Amendments Committee. Good afternoon, my name is Lisa Redrup, and I'm one of the councillors for the Harston Committee. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Brian Jones, I'm Deputy Leader at the Council and Lead Member for Arms and the Environment. Thank you. Um, so, do we have any apologies for absence today? Uh, thank you, Chair. We have two apologies for absence today. They're uh, coming from Councillors Ariel Khan and Councillor Natalie Warren Green. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, item three uh, Do any members have any interest to declare in relation to any items? Um, or if not, um, if one should subsequently come up during the course of the meeting, um, would they? Please make it clear at that point. Thank you. Any declarations of interest? Take that to the Thank you. Um, item four, um, reviewing the minutes of previous meetings. We actually have um, two sets of minutes to review, um, one being held on the 11th of April. Um, do, do any members have any comments to make on? For the next week, eleventh of April. So, okay. Have we, have we therefore approved the minutes? Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Chair. Just getting one of the minutes. Um, in section eight, I'll just stop after a small correction to the minutes, just where it says um, that a local habitat is being reduced, just that could be changed to a local habitat map. We we'll just guess about the local nature recovery strategy. I like to say it because I'm also present in the And then we have the minutes for Yes, can we take that with that and thank you very much. And then moving on, we have the minutes of the meeting held on the 4th of June. Um, are there any amendments to make? 
on those minutes, or can you take those as a record? Agreed. Agreed. Thank you. Um, now, um, do we public question? Do we have a public question? Right, yes. Okay. Um, so we've received one public question. Um, it's been published in an online supplement. Um, I'd also like to use my discretion as chair to um, give this opportunity to invite questions from the, the um, members of the college uh, who were involved in the session this morning. So, um, so if, if, if we've got questions, as I believe we do, um, so we'll start now with those. Yeah. yeah, and just for clarity for anyone who may be reviewing a recording today, we've been doing a student engagement day with students from Compton Village College, Sawston Village College, and come on, guys, sorry. Yeah. Campbell, apologies for that. Um, so, yeah, we've had five groups today, and each group has got a representative or two who's bringing a public question. So, could I ask our representative from the biodiversity group to come up and ask your questions committee and just so you're aware we're going to take all the questions in one and then we'll discuss um we were thinking about like the curriculum immersion days like the rp days that we have um, at lower school we were thinking of like an equivalent for nature and the environment to emphasize how important the topic is and to supplement the curriculum for year seven to 13, would the committee support greater action and awareness raising in schools about nature and biodiversity? Can we get the water up there? Would the council consider action to make everyone more knowledgeable about the urgency of the water crisis, but also publicize steps that can be taken to prevent it? So an easier step to do this might be to implement some kind of water butt scheme uh, where they're provided at a lower cost as a grant scheme for communities, uh, maybe supporting reduced prices to residential level as well. Uh, also, to potentially implement a water campaign using simple messaging, harking back to the two metres apart from COVID, uh, to widely communicate the, the issue with things like posters, ensuring that everyone is forced to understand the issue and also specific targets, such as water use targets, spreading urgency, but also hope. How could the council help schools reduce food waste by providing, uh, by providing areas for children to engage in the food cycle? Could you educate them on community food growth through the use of allotments? Some of our big ideas include promoting the use of reusable packaging to replace single use plastics and advertising farm farmer markets and an experimental kitchen working on site schools. Uh, we'd like to highlight the importance of the hands-on approach by dedicating a lot of areas to schools and to induce community food growing. How would you as council help us with this? Okay. Uh, in the next local plan, could there be provisions to improve bike storage and security to encourage more people to cycle around Cambridgeshire? Um, this would include 24-hour access for people so they could access their bikes, um, anti-theft measures like uh, maybe locks or passcodes, um, and shelter to keep them dry. Uh, you've already said uh, biodiversity net gain targets from 10% to 20%. Do you have plans to increase the biodiversity in gain? something more ambitious, like 25%, to increase biodiversity in new building projects? And our circular economy representative. Uh, hi, I just wanted to ask, how will the council support schools to run events that will stimulate a circular economy? For example, clothing swaps, which wouldn't require too many funding to get started. 
and how does the council educate young people on what steps they are already taking to combat climate change? Thank you. I thought those were four excellent questions. Um, and I think they're all questions that we can, at the very least, um, take back and the officers can give full consideration to. And I think there are some really, really interesting ideas to think in there that um, make the morning um, very much worthwhile, I think. And, and so I um, hope we can do more of these sessions in the future. Um, so, yeah, just moving on to the previous agenda. Yes, sorry. So, with these public questions, um, again, as the chair has said, some brilliant ideas here. What we will do as council is we're going to go away with no teacher questions. We're going to explore what actions we can take. Um, you know, there's a range of things here. There's lots of considerations that have to be done internally. But we'll also come back to you all with written responses, letting you know how we've been getting on in response to your questions, the work that colleagues have been taking on. And then, fingers crossed, we can get loads of actions out of it and actually implement these things. But yeah, we, we look forward to continuing to engage with you all. And again, thanks for your time and effort this morning. So, um, we do have one um, question from uh, members of the public in, in the usual way. Others not from this morning's meeting. So, uh, Ms. Dr. Turnbull, yes. would you like to read your question, Dr. Turnbull? Chair, I have a statement of information and a question. I was on the 6th of March, joint statement from addressing water scarcity in Greater Cambridge, made by this council and others. I have some additional information from the Environment Agency. First, the substance of their freedom of information applied to me is that they were provided with initial analysis to set out initial water saving calculations of retrofitting existing households and non households by DEFRA and MHCO2. That's where the information came from. The Environment Agency reviewed that information. To show the potential to save enough water for up to 9,000 households. Based on this information, DEFRA and MHCLG proposed initial funding of the retrofits to now initial stages of the water credit scheme system developed. Nothing further has been said publicly about this water credit system since. Cambridge Water has reached the North Bay. Utterances. More recently, certain large previously blocked planning applications have been granted by this council and the City Council in the face of continued environment agency objection. Double in the recent case. My question is what is the timeline for a compulsory water credit scheme that is A, supported by enforceable regulation? And B has started to make measured water savings by customer education and by retrofitting water economical, domestic, and institutional fittings. Thank you, Dr. Turnbull, for your question. Um, I've asked the, um, and the service, and I have a, a reply here from Stephen Kelly, the director of planning, um, which I'll now read. The development of the water credit scheme is being overseen by the Cambridge Deliver Delivery Group in concert with the Environment Agency. Initial funding by the government has been earmarked to develop and implement a credit system with Greater Cambridge area. Cambridge Delivery Group have established a water scarcity group that is overseeing this work. That group comprises representatives from DEFRA, 
the environment agency and the water industry. Shared planning service also attends these meetings. Alongside the work of the Water Scarcity Group, Cambridge Water are engaging with the Environment Agency on the preparation of their Water Resources Management Plan. That document, following the initial feedback from the Environment Agency and the publication of a subsequent version, continues to be the subject of discussion between the Environment Agency and Cambridge Water. It includes a number of demand management measures, including the accelerated rollout of small meters to try and change user behavior. Progress is therefore being made on the finalization of a plan against which future housing and non-domestic growth forecasts can be put. It's expected that a final version will be submitted by the end of this year. The water credit scheme therefore provides the potential to supplement savings already being targeted through the Water Resources Management Plan 2024. The contribution and timing of any benefit is still being explored and agreed. This will include expiration of the regulatory framework required to underpin such a credit scheme. Um, and I understand you might have a, a supplementary question. You already answered. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. That case. Um, thank you, Dr. Turnbull, for that question. Um, yes. Um, uh, a factual comment: the the uh, Darwin Green application was refused by the local authority, and then it was one on appeal. As to, um, and in the context of planning, it's not always that we have been taking a very firm attitude on water. But what we can do is determined by what the precedents that determined by previous applications, uh, very much influenced by the development in my Cambridge North Station, which was used and then approved on the basis, uh, on the same basis of the Dharma Green one. Um, it, it's rather unsatisfactory. And there may be a certain scepticism about how effective it will be to do the water credits, but we have to give them a chance to, to see how it works out. And, and that's the position we're in at the moment. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, I think that completes uh, public questions in item five. So I uh, suggest we have to bring the journal so we can reset the table so we can. Okay. Yep. Yeah, let's do that. Thank you. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, right, um, so we're just going to drag the table down there so we can see. Okay. Um, yeah, no, Thank 
Yes, um, after that, so uh, I think we're all ready to continue the meeting. Um, the next item, item number six, um, it's an update. Um, on the zero carbon and doubling nature action plan. Um, okay, I'm getting a bit close to the microphone. Um, I hope you all heard that anyway. So we're going to have an update from uh, Ellie Haynes on the zero carbon and doubling nature action plan. Over to you, Ellie. Thank you, Ellie. Can you all hear me okay like that? Is that? Yeah. Great. Um, so yeah, good afternoon. Um, and I'm going to be delivering the zero carbon and doubling nature uh, strategy and action plan up, uh, annual update report. So first up, as you will know, um, so we're first going to look at the emissions from our own estate um, and so our council operations. Um, and just as a um, so, uh, as you will know, our targets are for a 45 percent reduction by 2025 and a 75 percent reduction from um, by 2030. And that is from a 2018-19 baseline. And that's for our carbon emissions. And so, as you can see from the graph, graph here, um, the, uh, there is a 22% reduction um, in the year 2023-2024. Um, as you can see, our largest remaining source of emissions is our fleet. Um, but it's important to note here that the shared waste service is increasing the use of hydro-treated vegetable oil in parallel to the Water Beach Renewable Energy Project to, to address the to address the need to reduce emissions further in this area. And further emissions reductions are going to be realised in 2024-25 um, on the commissioning of measures included in the greening of South Cams Hall project. And work has been undertaken to um, assess possible measures to reduce emissions from the council's uh, small sites or communal, communal rooms and small sites as well. So um, some significant reductions that we have seen this year have been around um, in South Camps Hall um, and um, there's been a reduction in all emission sources as well. Um, and there's also been significant reductions um, realised from the LED lighting project as well there, as you can see from that light blue bar. There. 
So the council aims to support the district to reduce emissions by half by 2030 and to reach net zero by 2050. And as you can see, these emissions have been slowly reducing since 2005. They rose again um, slightly in 2021, um, following a particular dip in 2020 um, due to COVID, um, but they're back down again in 2022, as we can see. Um, and just as a reminder, there's a two year sort of time lag on this data that we receive um, from uh, that's sort of publicly available data um, from the Department of Energy Security and Net Zero. So our largest sources of emissions um, in South Cams are from transport and the sources, um, which you can see is that sort of light blue, um, light blue bar there. Um, and much of this, uh, the sort of emissions reductions that you can see um, overall in this graph here is due to um, th the reduction in grid carbon emissions as well. So our action plan has eight overarching areas of work, which can be seen here. Um, so as you can see, they're mostly on track um, with only one stalled and nine delayed. Um, and these are largely uh, those those ones which are delayed are largely due to the revision of the local time um, plan timetable. Um, and um, I'll sort of go on to that later when I talk about our section on um, decarbonising planning. Um, but 10 actions have now been completed. And as you can see, um, that 31 there, a number are still um, sort of ongoing. So sort of there are a number of actions within that which um, whereby significant uh, work has been undertaken but that is work which sort of is undertaken year on year so so that work is still ongoing but significant work has been undertaken in that area. So our first area of action is around uh, reducing our consumption of resources and waste. Um, and we've made progress through communications campaigns, um, including those that you can see um, on the slide there. Um, and there's also been a number of events, including community action days. Um, and so sort of there is, um, you can see the progress uh, that's taken place in that area. In terms of uh, decarbonising planning and land use, um, there were seven policies related to climate change in the first proposal uh, consultation of the new of the local plan. Um, and the most recent update we have um, as of um, um, as of when this update was produced, um, is that an update to the local plan timetable was agreed by members in March 2024, um, as well as that of the North East um, Cambridge draft area action plan. Um, but at the moment, what we're doing um, and what we can influence is around um, using our pre-application discussions to encourage developers to go beyond current requirements. So our largest support uh, source of emissions um, in the district is transport, as I previously mentioned. Um, and sort of this is clearly something that we need to look at reducing emissions um, in, and sort of in the sense of sort of being able to reduce our district wide emissions. Um, as you can see from that graph there, the largest proportion of emissions actually comes from our A roads um, and then from motorways and then followed by minor roads. Um, so sort of you'll see um, a number of actions there that we're on. Oh, You'll see um, a number of actions there that we're undertaking to reduce emissions, um, including from our waste service. So the introduction of um, the ERCVs that have been undertaken over the um, over previous years. Um, so we now have three electric refuse collection vehicles in operation, as well as one street sweeper. Um, prelim preliminary enabling works for the REN project have been completed and the HVO procurement um, was completed with the contract awarded. Um, so we've also contributed to a number of um, area of sort of um, area wide uh, projects in terms of um, sort of the different sort of strategies that are happening at different levels of governance. So um, including um, contributing to the development of the CPCA EV charging strategy um, and um, supporting partners as well to deliver sustainable transport initiatives. 
Um, and in addition, um, we also awarded £15,000 in grant funding for electric vehicle charging. So there's also a number of completed actions, um, including installing the EV chargers at uh, South Cam's Hall, um, developing a strategy for EV charging infrastructure on council assets, um, and supporting the development of Cambridgeshire County Council's um, active travel strategy. So Emissions from buildings, including domestic properties and businesses, is also um, is the second largest source of emissions um, area wide in South Cambridgeshire. Um, and um, so you can see that uh, there has been um, significant progress made um, in the retrofit of South Cam's Hall, um, as mentioned sort of previously um, as well. And sort of the. Um, in addition to the work on uh, South Cam's Hall, um, there's also been um, an assessment of the communal rooms um, and the small sites, um, which uh, has been undertaken to identify further opportunities for decarbonisation. Um, and we're also continue, we also continue to deliver the home upgrade grant um, to support re residents to provide um, support through the Action on Energy scheme. Um, and so you can see sort of some further projects completed here as well. Um, and that includes funding community building improvements through the Zero Carbon Communities Grant Scheme, um, installing LED fittings in council in council owned streetlights um, and upgrading property, um, 80 privately owned properties through the government funded sustainable warmth project. So work in the um, area of supporting businesses to reduce emissions has um, really accelerated, um, including through offers, um, offers, offers to businesses, um, including the offer of um, the use of a thermal imaging camera um, and the green impact program for businesses as well. Um, there's also been a number of different webinars held for businesses to support them in their transition to net zero. Um, and you'll see on our on our own estate as well, the EPC of um, so work on our commercial properties has also been undertaken and the EPC of um, or the energy performance certificate of um, Cambridge Science Park has been improved to an A rating. So in terms of decarbonising food systems and agriculture, um, a report was taken to SIAC on the 4th of April out, um, 2023, um, outlining the areas of work um, being undertaken to support uh, food and agriculture provisioning. Um, and so we're also undertaking work to develop our approach to this area. Um, and we set up a cross-departmental um, meeting to identify areas within the council to coordinate work on um, on food, sustainable food um, and held an ex external meeting with stakeholders um, to to support um, uh, linking up of actions on sustainable food. Uh, work continues to develop our approach uh, to training and education around climate change. Um, this includes our Zero Carbon Communities program externally, as well as our um, Green Connect sessions and the local climate action conference. Um, internally, uh, for um, in our offer for officers, we're also developing um, our carbon literacy courses um, and have trained a number of staff now um, and have achieved our status as a bronze carbon literate organisation. We also awarded um, 124,900 for 10 projects through the Zero Carbon Communities Grant Scheme. So another key element of the action plan is how we respond to the ecological emergency. And so we continue to do a number of areas of community engagement in this area, including developing case studies of nature projects um, or cl and collating a directory of local nature projects, as well as publishing information on um, climate friendly gardening and nature activities. And these are shared through a number of different channels. We have adopted a more uh, hands-on approach in um, to uh, planting trees and improving sites for nature on our um, HRA land, uh, and are sort of have been supporting uh, habitat improvement projects um, as exempt, um, 
as exemplified by the um, Habitat Improvement Project with the World Trout Trust. This slide details uh, the number of revisions um, and the uh, two, two different actions. Um, these revisions are largely due to the development uh, where actions have developed from um, uh, they have from where they have previously been um, written to reflect the need to set up projects, but are now being revised to reflect where we are in terms of supporting the implementation of these pro of these actions. Um, but this is with the exception of um, action to, uh, 8.2.5 um, and I would like to just point out a clarification here that um, I um, in the report this is listed as 8.2.4, um, this is action 8.2.5 um, and uh, just to note that that um, is uh, that that change there is around the um, change from the local climate fortnight to the local climate action conference. Um, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Thank you for the report and very detailed explanation of it. Um, I was just wondering, we, we measure um, our energy use in terms of scope one, scope two, scope three. And you mentioned in the report that from 2024-25 that we're extending scope three reporting to include major service contracts. I just wondered what, what you mean by major service contracts and if you think that will have any impacts on our data going forward. But can we backtrack that to talk to the baseline to, to make a comparison? Um, <laughs> it's a technical question. Um, thank you. Yeah. So the um, in terms of the in. Um, inclusion of the major contracts so um, we will be looking at um, what level of contract to so that will in in developing that approach um, there'll be a number of things which we will be looking at one of those is the level of contract which to in, um, to include within that um, so sort of what what level um, sort of do we need to include what financial level will we um, need to include um, and we'll also be looking at what information is available from those contracts to include um, within our accounting because it's it's also a case of what data will be available to us through that um, and so it will be a process of of developing that approach as well and and I think looking at the the baseline for that data um, and sort of seeing what we can do for to to reflect the that within the baseline um, is also something which we will need to need to look at in terms of what is possible um, yeah to to include there um, thank you Kevin for presentation. Um, I just wondered, um, in terms of our own internal targets and um, 2025 being not very far away, will, will we be, I mean, obviously the biggest chunk there is the waste feeds and um, I guess switching over to HGOs is quite a quick thing to do um, compared with other options. But I just wondered, would, would we be aiming to sort of um, meet that run rate by the end of 2025, or I imagine it'd be quite challenging to get 2025 as as a complete year down to that. Then I just wonder what what the uh, what the plan is there. Um, yep. Yeah, so we will be um, looking. So that date will be. Um, the end of March 2025. So it will fall in the 2025-26 financial year. So um, we'll be sort of 
looking i mean we can look at an approach to mid-year accounting to see if we can if we can do something like that to try and um uh, get a better sense of accuracy within our data um but yeah we will look at what our approach um to that can be in terms of what what data we can get and how accurate we can get it to the end of um 2025 yeah <laughs> thanks Hello. Thanks very much for that. Um, I'm being dec decarbonizing planning. planning. You mentioned the new um, plan that was agreed by Cabinet back in March for the emerging joint planning. I'm afraid that it's going to be even late. Um, there's a, there's um, a new plan we put in place at the moment, which is going to push that potentially back to 2026. Um, but this will be coming to the soon. <laughs> well, but, but just to let you know that um, it's not that we don't want to do it quicker, it's just that things are um, because of the issues we have with water supply and the transport, um, making connections not going forward, and various things. The government is now in the US to. Okay, work still under the current way of creating a local plan, rather than what we're looking to do was to go into the new, be one of the guinea pigs in the new, in the new method that isn't happening now. So just to clarify that, but you have the information once we have it um, formally adopted. Okay, I have one other question, if, if I may, and uh, Alice in the report uh, talked about um, our um, work around uh, community centres making um, that part of our estates more efficient. Um, and I read that there was some sort of um, perhaps um, technical and sort of cost viability issues around that. And I, I just wondered, um, you know, I, I guess the value of um, for example, putting solar panels on some of our community roads, um, it might be marginal in a sort of economic sense, but on the other hand, they're quite visible parts of our estate, and therefore there's a sort of intangible value there and people seeing that South Council are doing the right thing. I just wondered, um, I mean, I guess this is a specialist area, so I wouldn't expect you to have all the answers on that, but maybe if not, then, um, Maybe at our next meeting, we could we could just have a bit more of a report on you know what the issues are and if it's a way around. Don't uh, spend too much time on it, please. So more important things to do, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Um, I noticed in the um, on the biodiversity side, it's largely educational uh, activities and uh, promotional activities. Um, it is also important to ensure that that gets taken into a, a suitable land gets taken into biodiversity ownership. Have you been looking at uh, working with the local um, conservation, nature conservation uh, organisations in terms of uh, finding, aiding them, or facilitating the, uh, the purchase or uh, acquisition of land? And because that, that's the role that we could do without. Actually, having to spend lots of money in purchase of ourselves, but um, we, we, we may have a role. I just wonder whether we have a role in terms of being a, a, an honest broker, so to speak. So, so the second point is uh, now that the Darwin Green permission has come through, um, have you looking at how the biodiversity might um, opportunities may come in terms of uh, the large country park, which is proposed in that development?
Um, just regarding uh, the Darwin Green, I would have to speak to planning colleagues on that, um, but it's something which um, we can I can speak to to planning colleagues um, about um, and to see what the opportunities might be. Um, and then as well on. So with the development of the local nature recovery strategy, uh, the in, so we're working so. We are working in partnership with the other district authorities and the county council, as well as Natural Cambridgeshire on that. And the hope that that the hope is that that um, sort of will help to develop not only that sort of um, develop that kind of collaboration with other organisations, but then also sort of identify further areas where we can sort of do do more in that area as well. Um, and so I think that is something as well, which we can reflect within the new climate and nature strategy um, as well. Um, and, and I'd just like to note as well, sort of on the on the planning side of um, things that is really it's really important that that is reflected as well in the um, climate and the new climate and nature strategy. Um, and so that will factor into the way that we are developing that as well. Does that answer your questions? <laughs> Thank you. Sometimes, um, sometimes diversity helps and adds uh, lots of lots of values of idea. Unfortunately, South Camps uh, South Camps has a great diversity from uh, people here are been supporting and working from different parts of the world. Sometimes for a one particular solution uh, for one particular problem, it might be solved in a different ways when that, and that is already happening in different other parts of the world. So, have you ever had this uh, council ever thought of how we can do it, do the job in the sun in the future, like collecting the knowledge and ideas of different practices of different traditions that can solve a lot of our ideas? And also, what are the other um, other neighboring councils are doing, like the other neighboring district council are doing, other neighboring uh, county councils are doing, what they are doing, if we can take the best practice from the neighboring districts also sometimes solves our problem a lot. So we can act, it's a, it's a shared knowledge and mutual and a win-win situation for all of us. I think on the, the sort of international local knowledge on um, and experience on climate change, I think it's a really good point. And I think definitely in, I think where, where we can, um, apply different practices to our work um, uh, as officers we we do so and um, do attend a number of conferences and webinars and try and um, gather knowledge and understanding um, around sort of best practice um, for climate change um, and and also sort of in response to the um, ecological emergency so sort of that does factor into our work um, and that there will be a large sort of gathering of and of that of that knowledge as part of the development of the climate okay um can i just clarify um under the general heading council housing there's a paragraph talking about urban street housing um i should have declared at the beginning that i'm a councillor director of urban street housing um those properties are held separately um, in a company called Sevcams Limited. They're not actually part of um, Sevcams Council Housing. Um, it'd be fair to say that the properties are all over the shop. Some are quite new and could probably be retrofitted quite easily up to the latest standards. Some are older. You should probably also be aware that Ermine Street manages a couple of thousand military um, housing properties on behalf of the MOD. Most of those haven't been updated since the 1960s, 1970s. Um, I think they dragged down energy ratings uh, across the board if we actually tried to uh, include them in the, uh, the South Cam's average. So uh, that's, a, that's a separate um, commercial decision uh, to be made in conjunction with the MOD as to whether those can be uh, upgraded. Um, I think that's an ongoing discussion. Mm -hmm. 
thank you. A um, couple of things that I would like some more information on, maybe. Um, page 18, paragraph 49, talking about funding uh, by CERP for home upgrades. Now, that seems to be something for only for those who, I think, how did you say that? Well, in poor performing homes occupied by low income households in off gas areas. Very specific, but there are still homes in non off gas areas <laughs> that potentially could be upgraded, and those who might seem to have funds but don't have it. So, considering that 69% of domestic properties are privately owned, that's a large proportion, and there's a lot of work still needs to be done. How can we get more of those private homes <laughs> upgraded? That's the first one. Um, the second one is about uh, support to parish councils to deliver the, uh, what you call the local nature recovery plans. We talk about five community projects, but I'm just wondering how many parish councils are aware or are even interested or have shown interest or are taking this up? And how can we make it more widely known to them so they can, more of them can participate? Thanks. Um, so yeah, on the um, Cambridgeshire Energy Retrofit Partnership, um, so uh, as part of um, that, so the home upgrade grant was limited to off-gas properties. The government have announced their um, new grant scheme, which will run from April 2025, which will um, include on-gas and off-gas properties. So it will include um, both of those um, factors, whereas previous grant schemes such as HARC have only included off gas, so there is an opportunity to do um, yeah, more through 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 that. Um, and uh, then also there is a separate piece as well, which um, we recognise in terms of support for the um, those who are able to pay for retrofit um, measures. Um, and we are as a, as that partnership, we are exploring um, ways that we can further we can support those. Um, Households to um, increase the uptake of retrofit in that area. Um, in terms of the um, four parish councils, um, so we do uh, speak to the communities team um, because obviously they run a number of different grant schemes, um, and we try to coordinate with them on on um, sharing our offer for um, parish councils and community groups. And so, sort of, we seek to collaborate with other. Um, Teams within the council to try and um, share that, but um, and share and and we do have a um, understanding of sort of of which parish councils have taken up our offers for certain grants and, and different um, schemes like that. So um, we can see where um, we need to um, where where sort of parish councils might not be um, uh, taking up the offers um, in certain situations. I think this is where, for me, um, working with local members is so key, it's quite important. And sometimes members don't know about these things. So that needs, definitely needs to be improved. Um, I mean, I've got five parish councils. I don't think any one of them has taken up any of this. So, you know, th th there's a lot we can do to help, to get the message out. It's just making that message known to us. Just briefly to follow up uh, to uh, Councillor Bar Bhattacharya's question, um, and the fact that you go to conferences uh, and involved in the climate emergency framework of questions, I just wondered whether, uh, I remember I worked in the local government on, on, in the face of the field, uh, and I found it particularly valuable because you're an isolated specialist in working in a, a field of other people working in other fields. Um, I found it particularly useful to be a member of a network or, in my speciality. Uh, in my case, it was the predecessor to the uh, Association of Local Government Ecologists. But I presume there are similar networks for climate action and so on. Are, are your offices members, and are they being paid for or uh, funded for this by the local authority? How, how, do, how is that working in, in, in the team? So, 
So this may be one for Rebecca, but <laughs> um, yeah, so, so um, the team is very supportive of our um, uh, involvement with um, in, in those, those networks um, and sort of time to um, further um, to, to go to the, the meetings and sort of gather that knowledge and, and, and get that knowledge. Um, personally, I'm a um, member of the Institute um, IEMA, the Institute of Environmental Management, um, and and the the offer is there for the team to be supported through um, for with with um, professional development. Okay, thank you. Um, but once again, I'd like to. Um, Thank Ellie for a comprehensive report, and and I think you know what it shows is that um, however daunting a task is, you know, um, it, it's finding a few sort of big rocks to put in the jar, and then filling in with a, a lot of other smaller um, initiatives. And, and when you look at that whole list of initiatives, it, it's really um, impossible. Uh, not to believe that that is having a real effect now and, and that um, if, if we could actually measure the amount of carbon dioxide that um, is floating around in the atmosphere, it, it's, um, it's now smaller than it would have been if we hadn't had all these initiatives. And I, um, I had hoped, um, uh, or rather meant to um, pay credit not only to um, our sort of incredibly professional officers, also you know, cabinet for um, making a lot of these things happen, and that leader Bridget Smith, but also um, pay tribute to our outgoing chair, because I think um, Pippa Hayden, you know, um, she, she was much more than a, a sort of ceremonial chair. She was doing a lot of um, pushing things in, in the background. I know um, particularly bringing in sort of doubling nature and biodiversity was, was um, one of her big um, sort of pushes. So um, I'm sure that the committee would, um, you know, unfortunately I think Pippa's now left, but um, join me in, in thanking her for, for all the work that she did um, and wishing her well in her new role. Um, and I think um, that probably brings this item to a close, if you may. Um, and the next item would be the uh, the forward plan, which I think is your plan uh, as well. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so next items on the forward plan uh, for November, we have an item on the uh, Zero Carbon Communities uh, funded projects update. Um, and then moving forward, we will have an update on the um, climate and the development of the climate and nature strategy. Um, and yeah, those are those two uh, items on uh, the forward plan currently. Do any members have any other business they'd like to bring? And if not, um, that's it and consider the meeting closed. So thank you, thank you everyone. Um, and thank you again to everyone. Um, there's still a few people here from the college and also of course um, very much want to thank um, members of staff at the college and, and their officers for bringing together what I think has been a, a really um, unique and, and very useful day. So thank you, everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, right, please, please, please. yes. So, um, oh, sorry. Um, sorry. So the next meeting of SEAC is um, on Tuesday, the 26th of November, and, and we'll be back in South Cams Hall for that. So, yeah, thank you.